We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars Wrestling Show, episode 284. I am your man behind the microphone and new Scholars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, Scholar Jeff. To my right is the new Scholars of Wrestling Party Champion, Scholar Tarek. How's it going tonight, sir? Well, fool, it is very great, to say the least. But there is one problem. Hmm. And what's that? The former champion is not here. It is yes. It is an absolute shame that he's not here. I feel like we made a grave mistake in winning these belts off him because not only did we lose Brian two belts, we lost Brian in general, Scholar Brian. Him losing these titles, all of a sudden he's been thanos away. We miss you, Brian. That wasn't our intent. I'm so sorry. Come back to us. Or did you get kidnapped by Charlie? I, I don't know. I, it's, I don't know anymore. I'll tell I you. I don't know what's going on with this world anymore. I'll hey, tell you what. I, I don't care. But you know what? We've got belts. And that's a very good thing. We want and our even belts so, back. And even so, I believe I've got the perfect, perfect bait to bring the other scholars and the entire Scholars of Wrestling Universe back to us you want to know what that is certainly well i'm not going to tell you because that's going to be an announcement for later on the show for i am the champion i've got my belt back and i am going to wait until the very end of the show to announce what i've officially got in store for this prestigious title wow how very dick of you hey i gotta learn from the best and until then we I are... taught you well oh no you're well, yes, you did. But elsewhere, we've got a job to do here at the Scholars of Wrestling Show, and that is talk about the highlights from this week in professional wrestling. But we cannot go any further. Obviously, we took a hiatus since the Royal Rumble itself, but there is quite a lot of fallout from that, isn't there? I'm just going to go right and say it with my facial hair rating. I'm going to give it a very high 4 out of 5 full beard. They're like... It was, honestly, it was a very, very great pay-per-view. The mm. only real downside was uh, the one women's match. Not uh, not Becky versus Asuka. There, what was the other women's match of that one? Lacey Evans versus Bailey. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, that just shows you how much I remembered that one. But in all honesty, that really was the weakest match on the card. And... The only other real complaint I had was just the simple fact of Charlotte actually winning the women's Royal Rumble from a... Actually, it was a very... Both Royal Rumbles were completely amazing. Mm -hmm. But now, seeing where they're actually going with Charlotte and her Royal Rumble win, I actually am not very mad at that anymore. But I can't... Lacey Evans and Bailey really was that one, that one uh, chink of the chain... Where now I said it on that little video that was on our on the Scholars of Wrestling Instagram, follow us. Uh, that I no matter what I'm I'm never predicting Lacey Evans ever again. <laughs> hey, I I still have faith. That being said, yeah, it's not not the highest praise on from this show, but conversely, the other side of that. That if that's the worst thing that you can say about this ma this show, it was paced nicely for the most part. The Royal Rumble matches were tremendous. The results, I can't dispute them. The and how we got there, it's great. Everything was great. And as for the Royal Rumble match itself, the at least the men's one. There were some complaints about Brock Lesnar completely taking out, like, the first half of the Rumble. In certain cases, I completely understand. I mean, Cesaro was made to look like a punk. Uh, Braun and Keith Lee were taken out. But Big they, boy. But they were both taken out because instead of focusing on Brock, that they were focusing on, they started focusing on each other, which was their downfall. It's like, there was that. Uh, Kofi, Big E, and Rey Mysterio tried to take Brock out, and then Brock actually was very creative on how he took them out. Mm -hmm. It was actually, like, the Brock stuff, I actually had zero complaints. I actually had a load of fun. And I like that the prediction I made two weeks earlier actually came into, into a tuition. Fruition. I can't say it. 
came to be. <laughs> there, yeah, <laughs> tongue tie. Excuse me, I'm tired. Tongue tie, but actually came true. And although there was a little help from Ricochet, which as soon as that happened and Ricochet was actually put in a number one contenders match for the WWE Championship for Super Showdown, I'm like, he kicked Brock Lesnar in the balls. Of course he's going to be get the one getting the match. But Drew McIntyre and got that one highlight moment and eliminated Brock Lesnar. But no, that, that wasn't it. Drew McIntyre took it one step further and actually won the Royal Rumble and getting the main event that I also predicted two weeks beforehand, Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. And from what I've been reading, that Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman have been kind of going back and forth on which, one, which match should close out uh, WrestleMania between Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns versus Drew and Brock. It looks like we're going to get Drew and Brock to close out the show. With the way he's being built, I would be shocked if they do anything different. Unless they've got some really dynamite women's match in the cards, which this year I really don't think that they do. But elsewhere, after I was going over the math in my head, I'm like, why in the world did no one, none of us call Drew McIntyre? He was my number like all, three. All the, all the pieces were there. And I am honestly a little disappointed in myself that I did not pick him to win in hindsight. But lo and behold, well, the title came where it needed to be. It is mine once again. And, you know, can't argue with the, the results. Great show, great wrestling, great title win for me. So, so but to be wonderful. fair, to be fair. The original plan was Roman Reigns winning. It was changed. So, in a way, we were we technically were right until the very last minute. <laughs> well, then again, that I feel like that's happened so many times that but that's, plans change is sort of just like it's a day ending and why. Hey, I'm act. Hey, it's the one time I can really say I'm very happy that I got that prediction wrong. I am. Uh, I can honestly say the same at that this point. Again, the matches were great. The results were great. The stage is being set for a tremendous WrestleMania season. And there's a lot to talk about here, and I'm digging it wholeheartedly. Speaking of WrestleMania, I got one quick question for you. It's not, yes. it's not a scholar's quick... I, I guess it can be, but I don't really think it is. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the WrestleMania logo this year? I think it's not the best, but what it lacks in bestness... It makes up for in freshness. It's something that's absolutely not stale, and it's it's memorable. It pops. Is it though? In my opinion, I think it is. It's it's big, and exciting enough to be interesting to me, and it's different. It just doesn't blend in with the rest of the generic kind of WrestleMania logos that they've had in the past. This one, say what you will about the the motif and all that. But at least it pops and it's different. Well, they have a reason for why they're doing it. Yes, of course. Uh, Florida. Not just uh, the name of the arena escapes me, but it's where the the Buccaneers play, and there is a, there actually is a pirate ship there. <laughs> so obviously they're going to use that to their advantage. Bring back Paul Burchill. Imagine. No. Gimmick, gimmick battle royal. No, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I understand why they're doing it. It just I don't know. Just it, it just doesn't it doesn't feel good right for me. I, like the the pirate sword and the WWE pirate flag, understandable. But for the WrestleMania logo itself, I felt like they kind of dropped the ball on just the, it being on a red wavy flag. I kind of part of me kind of like pictured it on being like straight across the traditional WrestleMania logo, but on a like a pirate treasure map. Yeah, I, I can see on a that. On a wavy flag, it kind of just makes it look... It doesn't make it look like the grandest stage of them all. The showcase of the Immortals is just basically another... It would look like just a gimmick pay-per-view. That's how it looks to me. At least like with some, like, WrestleMania X7, that, like, that looks like a pay-per-view where the best of the best go. Mm -hmm. 
this one, it just didn't feel right for me. Yeah, and I see that. I definitely see what you're going for. But conversely, I feel like this is this is that's kind of exactly what I'm talking about, where they can't do WrestleMania and the NX7 type of logo, just a very straightforward kind of thing every single year. No. Occasionally, they need something like, I liked what they did with WrestleMania 30. For they had even that they had sort of the Florida de Lis occasionally thrown in. I can see why I can absolutely see why you wouldn't like it just because of the the difference in in the style and how ornate I guess the the WrestleMania logo is this year. No, I'm like I I un, like I do understand like not keeping it just like plain and all that just. Have it work to where they're going. I mean, like the one, uh, like you said, the one for yes, uh, thir- for one for thirty. Uh, we're looking at a list of the WrestleMania logos. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're in New Orleans, so of course they kind of make it uh, gimmick, mm-hmm. but it still looks like a grand show. Look at the one in, uh, that they had in uh, thirty-five this past uh, this past year. Mm-hmm. It's in New York. They had the Statue of Liberty crown. They, but it still looked like WrestleMania. Like when you look at the, well, too, extreme, yes. clo- extreme close up. Like well, twenty, like twenty eight. Twenty eight. I'm not a huge fan of it. It, it kind of looks. It's not symmetrical. Yeah, I guess that's just what it is. I, like the symmetrical feeling of it. It just. Yes. Like I'm not even a big fan of the uh, twenty nine. The first time they. Went to midlife. I'm not necessarily a big fan either. I get what they were going for in City Block. Yeah, it looked, but it just—it's kind of an eyesore. It's, it's in overly certain... gimmicked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the when you're just describing that, I think the way that everyone will ultimately feel, I, I feel, is going to come down to what the rest of the set looks like. Again, if they pull it off right, it. If they pull it off right, it can have that grand. I believe it can still have that grand feel that you're. I believe you're going for, but if they don't pull it off right, yeah, I, th- I can see how it would just come off as a way too overly hokey. I think it's going to be like. I think the set is going to be like what they were last year, just one big giant screen. Hey, I don't think they're going to do anything really. Best way to put mm. it. WrestleMania 29, how pretty much they made a, they pretty much made a small New York City as the entrance, and then the Statue of Liberty was the centerpiece, where all the lighting was. They're not going to do anything like that. They're just going to have one big giant screen with just the WrestleMania logo on it, hmm. like well, what they did last only year. Time, only time will tell. But in the meantime, we still have the rest of the traditional. Well, before we go, I almost got ahead of myself. Final. Final scores for a rest, for Royal Rumble 2020. You're going with a full beard? I'm giving it a very a very high borderline goat face full beard. Hmm. It you was know, just that one women's match that real like if that match actually, you know, was good. Because it was a very sloppy match. But if it wasn't a very sloppy match, I actually would have been full on goat face. It, it actually this, this show really was a good show, all in all, minus that one match. You know what? I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna say this is a go. This is a goat face. Five, five out of five. Even the weakest match was still enjoyable. It had something for. It had some kind of level of substance. It had though, your eye candy on it. Yeah. Sure. Let, yeah. Let's just have it that. It, it, for me, it was acceptable, enjoyable, and presentable. So you know what? Given the strength of everything else on the card. I'm going to give it a goat face. I dug this super hard, and the matches, especially the two Royal Rumbles, were great. I dig it. And just the video of us reacting to Drew winning was just amazing. The excitement was palpable. You you had to feel it. You had to feel it. Okay. Now that that's done. Now the kid again. Oh, yes. (laughs) Now that that's all the way, now we can talk about the actual last week in professional wrestling. Starting with, chronologically speaking, last week's SmackDown Live, where we now officially have a new Intercontinental Champion in Braun Strowman. As our resident Intercontinental Champion, Intercontinental Title fan, give me what's your reaction to that? I am extremely happy that Braun Strowman won the Intercontinental Championship. 
Hmm. His, this is his first singles title. Took It took WWE long enough to actually give him a singles title. The only complaint I have with it is that is this what I've been saying pretty much the whole time we, we talk about SmackDown is that the feud between Braun Strowman and Shinsuke Nakamura slash Sami Zayn slash Cesaro is it was kind of a one-sided feud. Mm-hmm. Shinsuke and Cesaro pretty much I don't want to I'm not going to say that word it's going to the Shinsuke and Cesaro were pretty much there to look like the Brian Alvarez Brian Alvarez G word. I, I don't like that word. I've never I've never been a fan of that word. Mm. I don't, All right, I learned something new today. Uh, I hate like they pretty much were made to look like those like those guys that just can't get a good victory. Mm. It's it looks like it's just oh Sami Zayn is pretty much still constantly losing even though he's now a manager because the guys he's managing just keep losing. So now it just like it didn't take any drive. It didn't take any. There was no passion in me watching this because I'm like, well, I know it's gonna happen. It's like they're gonna have a. I don't, how long was it? Like a not even a ten minute match. It Something wasn't a very. Like it wasn't a very long it match. It didn't seem that way. No. It's just now bronze the Intercontinental Champion. Maybe they'll actually do something with the Intercontinental Championship, which mm. would make me happy, and. Uh, I'm still not a big fan of the design. <laughs> I'll just keep yeah. pointing out. I just, I'm trying. I am really trying to actually like this design of the new Intercontinental mm. Championship title. I'm just, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's not, it's not connecting with me. It's, it's a very different design for the Intercontinental title than we've seen in quite some time. Maybe it's also just the fact that, like, when they were announcing that they were going to be putting a new design on one of their titles, I, my response was. I hope it's not the Intercontinental cha- title because well, out of, guess well, what? Out of all the out of all the titles on this sh- on this roster on this pr- in this brand, the Intercontinental Championship was the last one I would think that needed an up- update. But nope, it's they they gave it an update, and I'm just tr- I'm just not a fan of it. I'm I just can't get into it. I still love what the title represents. It's still my it's still technically my favorite championship. It's just I'm not a big fan of this design, and it'll probably last us a good while. Well, that be, all that being said, this ch- title change seemed to come out of nowhere. It's not the kind of thing that you you traditionally see all the time, where you, you see a title change on just a random SmackDown. This, to me, sort of gives me a hint that they've kind of got something prepared. Like they're going to they're they've got something up their sleeves. The big question is, who is next for Braun Strowman, in your opinion? I'm trying to think of the SmackDown roster. Is... My first instinct is going to be Cesaro. As a, continu- as a natural continuation of this, of this feud and him just being lumped in with, with the rest of them. I can see him fitting in this role quite nicely. I would love... To see Cesaro go for the Intercontinental Championship. My only problem is they made him look like Alvarez were to Elias, who, in my opinion, like I know, like you and Scar- Scholar Charles are big Elias fans, and now that he's getting a babyface run, I'm sorry. Like when you look at a guy, compare it, compare him to a man like Cesaro, and then just him pretty much getting that word out. On Elias, I, I don't think, and the whole word going is is, Cesaro is putting it like they had nothing for Cesaro until Sami Zayn, basically pretty much is like no, I'll I'll just put him under my wing. Hmm. So, if there is anyone that I can actually see, like see, not that I want to, but I could see WWE trying to go for the Intercontinental Championship off Braun Strowman. It's probably Baron Corbin. Mm. Yeah, because hopefully it seemed like they were ending. You got you do have a point there, since it seems like they were ending the feud with Roman Reigns, and they were just moving everyone on to something else. We finally, like, we actually got the whole eating dog food 
Which because that's what we want to see. Which by eating it just means that we're gonna dump a whole more bunch of extra dog food on you. Which yeah, I'm glad this is over. This is stupid. Well, I'm glad. It's like I'm glad that's over, but I'm really happy that Otis gets a date with Mandy Rose next that week. That is gonna be frigging. Oh no! It's, oh wait, that's tomorrow. Oh no, it's not gonna be tomorrow. It's oh, gonna Valentine's be on, Day. It's gonna be on Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day that's right. That's right. Gold. So they're. I can't wait to see what pretty much the go home angle for their <laughs> Valentine's Day date is going to be. Uh, that. Why is this so much fun? Because uh, we all love Otis, and of course, back. Every go- fat guy in the audience can live vicariously through Otis for one night. Uh, I'll, I'll pass on that one. I'm. I don't think Mandy. I, no, it's. I just, it's, she's not my taste. It's the principle of the thing. Oh, I get it. How I get the principle. How many times in life have we been chasing the that one girl? Just just the chase. Every guy can relate to the chase. If it was Alexa Bliss in that role, yeah. Hmm. But not, not Mandy. The point is, every guy can relate to the chase. No matter who, what your taste is, every guy can relate to the chase. And just winning, you know... You got to root for your boys. And oh, right yeah. now, Otis is America's boy. He got the biggest reaction of the Women's Royal Rumble. Good for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Good job, WWE. Good job. Otis, you're over. Enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts for SmackDown Live before we move on? Uh, let's see. Not looking forward to the inevitable Roman versus Bray because we all know what's coming, af- coming from that. Hmm. I really don't want it to come to that, but like Thanos says, it is inevitable. Eh, but then again, with as long as Bray Wyatt is involved, at least the execution can still be fun. There's enough tools to play with and a lot enough toys to make it fun. It would make it so it would be it it'll end up being he still is winless at WrestleMania. Hmm. That's the problem. Mm, then again, I, I think I've there's they might be planning something else for that, but I, I'm going to hold that close to the chest. Uh, I'm still I still have I, hope that they're going to do something else. I I seriously I hope you're right, but I can't take that optimism mm. at all. Well, well it's more heart, just, it's more inevitable heartbreak. Mm. Well, I've got a feeling that the next couple weeks are going to chart that course very plainly for all of us. But in the meantime. We also had Monday Night Raw, where, to me, not as much notable things happened except for one major one. And that is the rumors seemingly being true that Charlotte is going to challenge Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's title. And especially going into NXT this week, they're laying it on pretty thick. They're setting it up. That's going to be Charlotte and Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. And... Like I said earlier, I actually am, with this, excuse me, with how pretty much this is and like turning out, I'm actually now not that angry that Charlotte won. Oh. Granted, Shayna Baszler actually deserved it more, but it's more, apparently Charlotte's been unhappy. This is them making it up to her. Mm. Even though I don't really understand why she would be unhappy. I mean, she's Nor being, do I. She's pretty much being booked like the Roman Reigns for the women's division. Whatever. People are always... Uh, some people are always just finding reasons to be angry at WWE. The only thing I can honestly say that this is good is the idea itself is fresh. I mean, really, there's not too many people that Charlotte hasn't beat at this point. And I think that Becky Lynch is still running into a very similar problem now, where they've been around a long enough time, they've pretty much done everything, they've beaten everybody for the most part. Where do you go with a character like that except another lateral move? And for me, for my money, Charlotte going after Rhea Ripley not only elevates the NXT title, it's also, yet again, a fresh match. It keeps both women interesting and alone credibility, more credibility to both ladies. I think it's a very, very good direction to go. And it continues to add uh, to add up the mainstream attention to NXT and as the brand, as a brand. 
Mm -hmm. That someone who is well established in Charlotte Flair is going to the uh, the yellow and black brand's top uh, women's title. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, and it's a good rub for yeah for Rhea Ripley and yeah I'm actually all for I'm actually all for this. And if the booking is if what I've, the dirt sheets have been saying, we're still going to get Shayna Baszler versus Becky Lynch. I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. Now, just sees where the women's uh, where the SmackDown women's title is going to go. Uh, I am still sticking to my bet from weeks ago. I still, given how much they were talking up Lacey Evans, I still think that Lacey has a shot. The percentage may have gone down, but you know what? I, I'm just going to stick to my guns. What do you? What happens if you don't? If you lose that bet? I will eat an ice cream cone if Lacey Evans does not win the title by WrestleMania. If Lacey Evans does not win the title by WrestleMania, Jeff is going to shave his beard. I am not doing that. <laughs> Although, in all seriousness, we're probably we're probably going to have to come up with some kind of bet or something. I I don't know. We'll have to come up with something. We'll figure something out as yeah. a pu as a punishment. As a punishment for being being wrong. Which you know, when it comes to Lacey Evans, when, no, when it comes to Lacey no, Evans, so no, 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 no. the odds are kind of against you. Yeah, the odds are always <laughs> against me, but somehow it all works out in the end, now, doesn't it? That I've said it once, and I said it again. Having that title on some on your shoulders, it changes you, mm. and it is a sort you, of you can, you can definitely see something different. I mean, I mean, look at what this title has done to me compared to what's been happening with me the last month. I'm still, I'm still. It's, it's keeping you, it's keeping you grounded. It's keeping you grounded. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's centering. It's calming. You got. Okay. Is it though? Yes. Is yeah. it though? Yes. Yes, indeed, it is. But elsewhere, anything else on Raw this week, or do we want to go to the place where storylines frolic? Let's see. Kevin Owens looked looked strong in defeat, which they kind of threw in the whole Samoa Joe getting a concussion and they're actually adding that to a st the whole thing to a story where they did something similar with to the viking war raider experience mm -hmm. which i'm like you know what all for mm -hmm. uh i'm glad to see ruby riot back oh yeah that was great i was so the, glad to see her back i'm glad to see her back i hope she doesn't end up becoming a lackey for lana I have I want, my doubts. Here's the thing. I actually want people to believe... I actually want them to think they're like leading it to believe that Lana and Ruby Riot is something. And Ruby Riot just attacks Lana too. And then it just becomes a three-woman a three a three woman battle. Hmm. Add something different to this. Because no one really gives a, no one really gives a shit about uh, Liv Morgan and Lana anymore. Especially since Liv Morgan actually beat her within a minute before Ruby Riot even came out. Yeah, there's... Okay, it. I, I was honestly staggered by this. I'm like, okay, all that hype and build up and give us a nice mm -hmm. and have uh, Ruby Riot be the big top heel of the story. I'm act. I would actually be all for it because uh, I because I love Ruby Riot and she actually deserves to get that kind of that one spot that Alexa Bliss had when she was the top heel of the women's division. Hmm. And if anything. Bring back Sarah Logan to have her be her muscle. Hmm. Give Sarah Logan something to do because she's amazing and she deserves to have more TV time than just being uh, the jobber to Charlotte. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Drew McIntyre, we said it, continues more to be that. awesome and just completely destroys Mojo Rawley, which was hilarious. Oh, Mojo, I for, I'm sorry. I forgot you were there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love, I love Drew McIntyre. Poor Mojo. And don't worry, this is going to be quick. Ready? Ring the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Claymore. One, two, three. Yep. Drew McIntyre continues to be awesome. Uh, and they, they got something good in him. When they when they announced before Raw started that they were going to have a number one contender match, a triple threat number one contender match for Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown for the WWE Championship, I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I kind of would have preferred... Uh, Brock Lesnar just hold the title to Mania, no title matches in between. Mm -hmm. But whatever, Brock, Le Brock Lesnar show keeps showing up at Saudi Arabia shows. And the second they announced who they were, I'm like, oh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, of course, because Seth Rollins, the man who's beaten Brock Lesnar twice, 
Bobby Lashley. Oh, that makes sense. He's on kind of a real hot streak, especially being the one in the the more victorious end of him versus Rusev, which is apparently over. And now Rusev is is nowhere to be found. And from what I've been reading, creative have absolutely nothing for him, which is kind mm. of a shame. Now Rusev is just waiting his contract out. And you get Ricochet. Ricochet has a real, like, my response was, okay, when you have someone like Ricochet, someone who hasn't really been on a hot streak lately and a winning, like, hasn't done anything real winning-wise, why is he in this match? Why is he having, why is he getting an opportunity to go for the big title when you have someone like Aleister Black who has been on an undefeated streak since, what, November? Hmm. So... Yeah, I don't have anything for this outside of people in the back seem to like him, and it's an interesting vision. Oh, Paul Heyman seems to like him, and of course, they once they well, my immediate response to the announcement of this match, was, other than why, was well, Ricochet kicked Brock Lesnar in the balls, and that's one of the big factors that got him eliminated in the Rumble. Ricochet's gonna win, and wouldn't you, wouldn't you know, the entire match was booked upon Ricochet being the small guy and Jerry the King Lawler completely. As uh, Brian Alvarez puts it, completely burying him. So yeah, Ricochet won. Yeah. And what is the first thing you get? Brock Lesnar coming in and f fiving him. Because Brock. Because Brock Brock. So that's that's the spoiler for Super Showdown. If people actually think Ricochet is actually going to win the WWE Championship, no. <laughs> who do you think you are, no. the Fiend? No. Yeah. Not happening. Not yet. Not anytime soon. But that's WWE for you. AEW, on the other hand, ha- seem to have feud and after storyline, after build, after build, after build, after build, and I found it very, very engaging. Starting with the progression of the Dark Order storyline. Have you been? Did you catch AEW Dynamite Kick from this past week? I have, and. For them to think that they can actually get Orange Cassidy into the Dark Order again. <laughs> no. No, he he's, doesn't really care too much for anything. He's too cool. He? He's too cool for the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. And, too freshly squeezed. And as for like Christopher Daniels coming in to make the save at the end, I like that they're kind of hinting at the fact that he may be, what are they calling it? What is the Dark Order calling it? The, the uh, anointed one or something? Yeah, the, the leader of the Dark Order. I, it makes sense, but I don't think it's going to, I think it's more of just like, see the treat, see the treat, see the treat, here's the reveal. Yes, that's my big question I was wrestling with. Like, is this a legitimate hint that Christopher Daniels is the is their higher power, or is this ultimately a false hint, a red herring, if you will? It makes sense because Fallen Angel it makes perfect sense for that kind of character to be in the dark order. But yeah, it's too, it's too obvious with how they're doing it. So I actually do think they're going to save it for Brody Lee Hmm. as the higher, as their higher power. Hmm. Interesting pick. And for some of those who don't know who Brody Lee is, WWE's Luke Harper. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, if they can get that guy back and working, I I really hope that they sign him. I think they will sign him. Oh, I think they're I'm gonna... just not convinced that that's the role they're going to put him in. But... Oh, he's a, he's obviously going to clean up his look. He's gonna he's gonna look like, I think he's gonna be some looking similar to how Undertaker Ministry of Darkness hmm. would look, but maybe with a long maybe with a little longer beard and not just the like a bottom goatee, but more like just a clean a cleaner looking be like full beard. Mm-hmm. And coned back and just obviously he's not gonna wear a dirty tank top and jeans. Mm-hmm. He's actually gonna wear something that could fit in the dark order. Hmm. And he's a good he's a good talker, he's a great wrestler. It just makes sense that they is it the whole impact wrestling of WWE guys becoming ma- uh, main event guys in another brand? Yeah, but the difference here is Brody Lee actually deserves to be in that spot. He was a completely missed opportunity for WWE. They tried to give that to Eric Rowan, and look where he is now. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the best. 
I actually think it would be awesome. I think he's a perfect fit. Mm. Well, I'm either way, that's one of many storylines I'm keeping a close eye on. And after that, not long, we also had the what I don't know how to say this, but this is a, a more of an official Britt Baker heel turn as as much as anything I've ever seen. Knocking the teeth out of Yuka Sakasaki. And then putting some sort was it, of... Was it not- multiple teeth or just one? I, 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 heard, I think I read it was, was just, just one. one. Yeah, I think it, I read it was just one. If she starts knocking ladies' teeth, teeth out, that it's it's beautiful. It's on brand. It's a unique heel gimmick. I dig it. I dug this super hard. And I was honestly, in all reality, way more interested in Britt Baker's character than I've ever been. Mm-hmm. That's fair. It was just something needed. It didn't... Ooh, excuse me. It didn't leave like that... Uh, like, it wasn't just like, Oh, it's gonna... This is gonna change everything! But it was a good enough... It was a good enough change, and I am intrigued on where they're gonna go next with it. Yeah, this... Again, to me, Britt Baker was... Obviously, they've got plans for her, but she wasn't quite clicking with me she needed a little something extra. And to me, this was this something extra that keeps her fresh, engaging, and interesting. And if they run with this, I, I can't wait to see more. But elsewhere, we the storylines continue to roll on. Uh, I don't have it on the run sheet, but it was part of a continued feud between Kip Sabian and Joey Janela, obviously the ex of Joe. Uh, Joey Janela, the ex of now Kip Sabian with Melby Ford. This is another thing that just sort of writes itself. The back and forth, the banter, the the tension. This, it just works. This, And I feel like they could really expand this. I was looking more towards what they're doing with uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. I'm, they're they're actually the top storyline for me. I actually am loving what they're doing with him, him not coming out with Omega and the Young Bucks, him, him just showing all these heel tendencies mm-hmm. that actually cost them their match against the what was it the Lucha uh, Lucha Brothers and the Lucha Bros, uh, the Blade Bunny, the Blade, and, and the b- Bastard. I don't know. But yeah, it, that's the point where it Butcher cost Blade them, and the Bunny. And the whole Why thing, I get that wrong? And it's. Adding more to the tag title match. Uh, uh, is it next week? I think it might. Are you talking about the mixed tag match between Kenny Omega and Riho versus Pac and uh, Nile Rose? Um, I believe there's the tag title match. Uh, Paige and Omega versus the Lucha Bros. Hmm. I think that's happening uh, next week. I'm having a real brain fart on this one. I, now, I think so I'm just, much. I'm really, I, like I said, I'm really tired. But then again, um, there's also so, on, especially on this episode of Dynamite Kick, it seems like there's so many different storyline threads coming and going. And what we did get is all being executed really well, in my opinion. That's what makes it all so rich, mm-hmm. I think. Again, even, like I mentioned, I'm really intrigued by seeing what they do with their style of intergender match. Like, especially between, again, the team of Pac and Nyla Rose versus Kenny Omega and his wife, Riho. Like, they... this Between the size differences and the comparable athletic ability, and I think... I want to see... I want to see Riho to just go nuts on Pac and just start doing some crazy stuff. Because Re- one thing I realized about Riho, now I see what Kenny Omega sees. Because she can, despite her size and looking like a little ridiculous, cute anime character, she can fly around the ring and work with just about anyone of any size. So yeah. seeing well. seeing what she can do with someone like Pac, that would be... That I will pay to see. It may give her some positive feedback, but she's still kind of, she's kind of the, she's generic. She hasn't, at least character wise, she hasn't really done anything with me. I think she's going to lose the title very soon. I'm in the same boat. I've been in that same boat for quite a while. But after seeing more of Riho's matches and how she, how she works, she, I, I really don't think like, I kept thinking like, uh, really? 
her. Her, really? Really? Until she gets in that ring, and it seems like all, so much that she does just, like, flows like water so naturally. I'm like, where, who are you? Where is this coming from? I so, guess I'm not there yet. Yeah, it's... She still uh, hasn't done it. It's, she's not left an impact on me, and it's just... I'm just surprised, like, has she really... Uh, has she ever had a real, like, title match that was actually built on story, not just, um, m like, mentor versus student type match? Uh, does the first ever match between her and uh, Nyla Rose count? Because that, that was technically a tournament and for a number one contenders tournament back when the, <laughs> excuse me, when the title was first announced. I mean, no, like, after she won the belt. Not really, yeah, she. I don't think she really lasts that much of an impact, and it's going to be just what it's a kind of just a failing impression for the first ever AEW Women's Champion, in mm. my opinion. Fair enough, but I think there's still some room for growth, and I think this maybe this is one potential way for to achieve that growth. It's not going to be as champion though. Yeah, but I mean, elsewhere, Nyla, it's Nyla Rose all the way. That woman is she scares me. Yeah, she is a... She's a beast. She, she's a native beast. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. hey, okay. <laughs> but elsewhere, if we want to talk about even more raw storytelling, we've got the ongoing saga of Cody and MJF. Cody getting his ten whipping lashes per, per his orders in order to get his match with MJF. And, yeah, they were really selling this and milking the hell out of it for all it's worth. I think it, I think they milked it enough to where it kind of reached that point. Of like, okay, you, this is this segment's going a little too long. I agree. Again, like, as much I, as I'm on board the, with everything MJF-related... It was, it was a little too long. The, I mean, it, it really... This, this segment didn't really do anything when it comes to... The wrestlers. I mean, Cody Rhodes is still absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. I And MJF is still absolutely hated. Not Other than uh, a possible planted fan. Mm. Po like, that's actually been a big discussion whether or not that fan attacking MJF to close the show was planted or not. Which, either way, I actually can, I can see both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the, I definitely got the drama of it. It's nice to see Brandy not being her Dark Order esque character and trying to, and just being Cody Rhodes' wife. She's now two characters apparently. Um, well, awesome, uh, awesome Kong is now gone to. She's been written off TV to, because the next season of Glow. Hmm. To, she's gonna go film the next season of Glow. So I guess they're just gonna drop that gimmick. For Brandy, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the drama was there. You definitely felt the emotions when, when Cody was getting those lashes. You felt when uh, Dustin, Arn, Brandy, they're all just being like, Just stop, he's already dead. And he's like, no, I'm not. I can take more. You got, Shh, you got no. one more. Just one more. You got the match. I I felt the drama, but it, yeah, it reached that point where it was getting a little too hokey, and it dragged a little bit. But and it and in my opinion, it did nothing to elevate Cody as like a top babyface and MJF as a top heel. We are it it just basically kept stating like, oh yeah, he's a top Cody's a top babyface, MJF is a top heel. We know this, and the sky is blue. Mm hmm. But and I it's still a like the sky. Outside. I still like the sky. I still like the rain. Do you? Yes. Mm hmm Okay. I don't like it when it rains. But anyway, that is AEW Dynamite Kick. I really enjoyed this episode, and it just really wants, makes me wanting more. When it comes to this week so far, Raw, NXT, and AEW Dynamite Kick, mm -hmm. all three shows delivered. I, like... We didn't really talk that much about NXT, but there really was some great stuff that happened. I mean, we're uh, between the Broserweights and Undisputed Era and them looking at going after Ciampa. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and just having the uh, six-man tag and the return of Velveteen Dream. No, yes. Like, all in all, like, all shows, we didn't talk about it, but there was still so much product that everything so far has delivered. And SmackDown has, at least last week, SmackDown was still, like, the is now the weak link of all these wrestling shows that happened on the week uh, on the current week, and now with hopefully Roman and uh, Baron Corbin is over. Now we get to see where Braun's going to now go with the Intercontinental Championship. New f- new stories can actually start building. Mm-hmm. Will we actually? What will they announce? What what, what is Goldberg going to do? Pretty much simply put, who is his squash match is going to be at at Super Showdown? Which who am I kidding? They'll probably do that one via go- uh, Baron Corbin. I don't know. Possibly. I don't... At this point now, it's a, I love Goldberg, but it's he's a gimmick now. Mm. He's, he's fun to show up, but at least he's now... He's not there constantly. It's nice to see him every once in a while. Hope, but hopefully when it comes to actually, you know, for the people who are there, I, want to, I hope we get to see good stuff. Something that's been building from Raw, AEW, Dynamite Kick, and NXT. Mm-hmm. Keep now, that momentum going. Now, speaking of Goldberg, they're obviously setting something up for for Super Showdown. Now, speaking of Super Showdown, some of you might be asking, and I know you're probably wondering yourself, what is the fate of the Scholars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship? When is the next time this prestigious title is going to be defended? Well, let me tell you, it ain't at Super Showdown. It's not at WrestleMania as you wanted it. No, I'm unfortunately I'm going to have to defend this thing at some point in the next few events, which leaves three: Super Showdown on the 27th, AEW Revolution since we're doing that now on the 29th, and then of course Elimination Chamber in March. So I'm going to be defending this title in March at Elimination Chamber, but the question now is, who am I going to be defending it against? Because it ain't going to be everybody. Which is why I'm declaring the number one contendership title scramble. That's right. At the next prediction show, which is going to be Super Showdown, if you're a scholar and you want a shot at this, well, all you need to do is show up and the winner advances. But hey, if you're unable to join us, either at Super Showdown or AEW Revolution, if you win, the, if you win the prediction show, then hey, you can take a shot at this. Last man standing. By the time Elimination Chamber comes around, guess what? It's you and me for this lovely gold belt. So, what do you think of it? What do you think of that? The gauntlet is thrown down. You think you got a shot? I always have a shot. Mm-hmm. Exactly may, what I want to hear. I always have a shot. Maybe it may be for this coming up. It may I may have to wait till WrestleMania, but I always have a shot. <laughs> fight for me, fight for it, freaks. Perform for me, monkeys. I want to see a show, a show I shall have, starting with Super Showdown. Is that enough of a promo for you? I'm not a performing monkey. Oh, you will be because I know you want this. I know you. everyone wants the belt. Everyone wants the big gold belt. Don't act like you don't. All right, I won't act like I don't. And we all know that we all want this belt. But elsewhere, that is our, res- that is our perspective on this week in wrestling. From Royal Rumble... To this week in wrestling and beyond. You've heard it from us. Now we want to hear from you. Our wrestling viewing, listening, consuming audience. Wherever you are. We want to hear from you. Wherever you are all across the internet. Facebook. YouTube. Twitter. Especially Twitter. Because you can connect with us directly and join the conversation directly. Join us there. While we're biting our title belts. Check us out at our main page at Scholars OW for all the latest episode uploads. And you can also check us out on our personal Twitter accounts. Fool, where can they reach you? You can reach me at the Avatar. 
You can reach the former champion, Scholar Brian, at Atomic Beanpole, and you can reach me at I'm Robbie Rage. Join the conversation. There's a lot of wrestling on the horizon, and we're going to cover it all because you know who we are. We're the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. See you all for the road to Super Showdown.